Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Dayan Chita. So, recently I uh, I heard someone, uh, a longtime meditator and Zen practitioner, as it happens, say they were often distressed by reading the news. Right, most mostly focusing on all the uh, the bad news that's presented. And uh, I mean, as many of us sometimes do, as I used to, and there's also the general phenomenon of doom scrolling that includes news and social media. And so I thought, well, you know, what should the Zen response to, to news and, and social media would, would be? Uh, so it'd be pretty easy to point out the, the uselessness of most social media, the endless stream of clickbait designed to keep our attention, give us a quick dose of dopamine while ultimately leaving us empty inside. Uh, but what about the news? That's different, right? What is news? What makes it news? So in, in Buddhism, we talk about pratitya samutpada. Uh, we have dependent arising, right? The idea that all phenomena arise interdependently and in other phenomena and eventually pass away. Uh, phenomena are empty right? in the sense that they lack any uh, metaphysical substance or uh, independent permanent existence. So in Buddhism, dependent arising is, is discussed in relation to the nidanas, the, the links of dependent arising, uh, ignorance of the independent nature of reality, uh, the formation of our volitions and tendencies, our consciousness, the phenomena we experience as we make contact with the world through our senses, our feelings, cravings, grasping things we crave, which creates our habits and character over and over and over in each moment with each experience arising and passing away. So one could approach the topic as uh, Johnson did a few months ago, I think in this, he gave a talk uh, uh, here and pay attention to the feelings that arise as one reads the news. Like, how does this affect me? What, what and catch them as they arise. And uh, that kind of meditation can lead to uh, a small or large epiphanies. Right? We suddenly experience the world in a different way. Uh, we, we, but seeing dependent arising doesn't have to be so sudden or begin so internally. It can also be the result of gradual cultivation through uh, contemplation and analysis, in this case of, of the news industry itself. So I'm going to talk about how I applied that analysis to news media uh, and social media, but I'm going to focus on news, to, to retrain my mind to see dependent arising every time I saw a headline or a feed. And it, it's, it's made me a much happier and healthier person. So seeing dependent arising applies to everything, right? Including news and social media, as well as our attachment and aversion uh, to the news, to our emotional afflictions and response. And, and realizing the, the emptiness of news and our reactions to it requires some analysis. So, so here goes, right? So, so what is, this is my, my information meditation, my information is that. So what is the news? Right? A couple of dictionary definitions, information about current events, a report of recent events, and what are events? Well, in a world of 8 billion people or so, there are lots of events. Uh, what do we really need information about, though? And why? How does that arise? So information and current events aren't just things out in the world. They're as empty as every other concept. And the idea that any of us actually need most or any, even any of this information, is itself another dependently arising phenomenon, as is fear of missing out. So maybe I should start with what the news isn't. It's not a mirror of reality. Recent events reported in the news are never, ever, ever an accurate representation of the total actual existing world that anyone actually inhabits. It's always a tiny sliver of the world. It's the uncommon and unusual that often get reported. And if it's not uncommon or unusual, if it's, it's often just another example of things that have happened many times, usually something reported to anger us, right? Another political scandal a former president insulting people. This isn't news. So people are distressed by all the bad news, understandably so, right? First of all, yes, events which we interpret as bad happen and they've always happened. And the same things are often bad or good depending on your perspective. Yeah, your mind shapes your emotional reactions to the news. So the so-called bad news gets reported often enough uh, because it's not common, at least statistically. Right? So, okay, so there's a murder somewhere in the US. It makes the front page of many newspapers, especially if the murder victim was famous or rich or attractive, right? You didn't know, you know who didn't get murdered? Like the other 333 million Americans who might potentially read that story. Mass shootings, horrible things. 
statistically, your chances of being involved in a mass shooting in the U.S. are infinitesimal. And they're nowhere near the leading cause, even of gun deaths, which are bad enough, but they get noticed. Wars, well, there's always a war somewhere, but rarely in most places in the world at once. Most people are not fighting in or victims of war. We should be grateful for that, as well as feel sorry and, and compassion for the people who are in the wars. So how many stories are about things politicians said but didn't do? Or how many are about things that might happen or indeed might not? How many are pure speculation? How many seem designed to provoke our emotional reactions? How many are minor updates on a major event that in themselves are meaningless for us? How many are pure clickbait uh, with vague hints and no details? How many are listicles? How many headlines are questions? There's a, a, a journalist named Betteridge has Betteridge's Law of Headlines. If it's a question, the answer is always no. So one interpretation of the news, news and social media aren't mirrors of reality, but rhetorical constructions of reality designed for one purpose, to get your attention and time so they can make money from subscriptions and advertising and possibly by selling your usage data. That's it. No matter how glorious the rationalization might sound, like democracy dies in darkness, or all the news that fit to print, news media platforms ultimately have one goal, or most of them, make money. Almost every major news source uh, in America, and indeed in much of the world, is a capitalist corporation trying to make money. And they make money that produces news that engages you, even if negatively. It doesn't matter how sincere individual actors within the systems are, the journalists and the editors, because they're all ultimately disciplined by the system. It's not good or bad, necessarily. It just is. Uh, like the world just is. How you respond is skillful or unskillful, though. So the, the, the view presented uh, leaves out anything that's typical, usual, ordinary, the things that almost everyone in the world uh, are actually doing. So what are we doing? We're working, playing, spending time with friends and family, watching TV, meditating, reading, listening to music, playing music, doing art, mowing the lawn, doing a favor for a friend, walking the dog, etc. So the news is giving you a delusional view of reality right from the start by presenting the world as more dangerous, more exciting, more terrifying than it actually is. It leaves out almost everything that actually happens. It has to. So if we accept that view of the world as reality, that what they say is important is important and that we should be angry, we're living in that delusion. So how does it work? So by giving us information, we really need to function in the world? No, it works by feeding our attachment and aversion, especially our aversion, our anger, our hatred. The stories that get the most engagement are the ones that stoke our negative emotions. Anger and disgust get attention and clicks and engagement. And it also stokes our attachment to views. People tend to focus more on the stories of things in the world they don't agree, that don't agree with their point of view, and then often angrily post their opinions about them on social media. It entices us both to cling to our own views and hate those of others. As Buddha told us in the uh, Magandiya Sutra, people clinging to views go through the world making trouble. I'll add they often make trouble both for themselves and others. But these are craving. As well, we have phrases like news junkie and politics junkie for a reason. It's junk for the mind, and we keep using it even though it's unhealthy for us. Political junkies really need to know the results of the latest poll, even though possibly the only political poll that really matters is the vote on election day. So media scrolling and binging also trains our minds to distraction instead of attention and concentration. All the good work we might do for ourselves meditating is undone by carelessly scrolling through news. Uh, so thus, in addition to taking away our ability to concentrate, it reinforces our attachment, aversion, delusion. So what do we call those in Buddhism? Right? The three poisons. So news media is generally giving us poison often, and in return, we're giving them our time, attention, mental and emotional well-being, ability to concentrate, our privacy, our opportunity costs, maybe our money. And what are they selling us? Craving, attachment, aversion, delusion, poison. We're giving them our minds and they're giving us poison. What kind of a deal is that? Who's getting the better bargain? So understanding this is a first step to changing our consciousness and preparing it to encounter the name and form of the news. Right? Vigilance about information. Apply that rubric every time to every story and see how often you really need to engage. So, but one might say, I have to be informed. Really, why? Why do we think we need to be informed? 
Do crucial world-changing decisions depend on our knowing some random information a news source happens to provide? Do we really need to know what some politicians say? Uh, our craving to be informed is another empty craving most of the time. Do I like to be informed? Sure, especially about the dependent arising of news and the effect on my mental well-being through overexposure. Not many stories about that in the New York Times, though. But I need to have an opinion, one might say. So really, do we? Uh, do we need to have an opinion on most topics at all? Why? What possible difference could my opinion make on 99% of what's reported as news? So it's not that some news might not be important to someone, but it's not important or relevant to me. It's not put there because people need to know, but because news sites have to generate content. They have space to fill, and they cover a lot of topics, hoping someone will be engaged. So questions maybe to ask. Do I really need an opinion on this? Does this affect me at all? And is there anything at all I can actually do to beneficially affect the situation? And if so, why aren't I doing that thing instead of wasting my time scrolling through more news? So always, always minding and reminding myself that uh, although there are some things reported that I actually need to know, that's a side effect. The real goal is to sell me the poisons of craving, aversion, delusion, and in return, get my time, attention, privacy, money, mental well-being, and ability to concentrate. And I found applying this information vigilance to every headline encountered eventually trained my mind to view the world in a different way. It breaks some of those habitual links of dependent arising that harm us. So mindfulness of information benefits from contemplating the dependent arising of news phenomena and applying the same questions over and over until we start to see news and, and social media differently. So now, after training myself this for quite a while, I, I spend a few minutes a day skimming headlines of the three major national newspapers, mostly because I get free subscriptions through work. Uh, rarely is an article actually worth reading. Same with the little social media I, con I consume. A few minutes in the morning on Facebook to see what my extroverted friends have been up to, and a few minutes on Reddit just to see how crazy people sound, and I'm done. The information vigilance, mindfulness and clear comprehension of information, and realizing the emptiness and dependent arising of corporate clickbait has over time changed the way I see the news and the world and made things clearer and my mind healthier. And thank you for listening.